Hey guys, I hate to interrupt, but I just wanted to take a moment to say if you're studying for the CPA exams and you like the visual learning approach that we take in this video, definitely check out Universal CPA Review's free trial. You can do this by going to www.universalcpareview.com or you can click on the link in the description of this video. From there, you could take a sneak peek at Universal's platform, which includes animated video lectures, study guides, and practice questions with task-based simulations that come with video explanations that walk you through the solution step-by-step, -step, kind of like having a tutor by your side. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to it. Okay, so next up we have repurchase agreements. So essentially, this is a loan. So what's happening here is a company sells, let's say, something of value, right? Could be fixed assets, could be their inventory, and they want the right to purchase it back at what will generally be a higher price. So when you think about the difference here, this is not much different than a loan while pledging, let's say, these assets as collateral, right? That difference in the higher price from the repurchase would essentially be interest from that loan. So there are two primary types of repurchase agreements that can be seen on the exam. And you can think of these as vehicles for conducting this type of repurchase contract. So generally, these can be conducted by either a call option or a put option. You might also see a forward contract, but at the end of the day, these types of contracts are a little bit more of the concepts that we're going to talk about in our derivative lecture topic. Okay, so we're not going to dig too far into this just yet. What we do want to know is how to record the sale from the repurchase agreement for financial reporting purposes, okay? So let's think about Eris Inc. They sell machinery as its primary business operation. Eris sells machinery on January 1st, year one to Korea Inc. for $200,000. Eris agrees to repurchase this machinery on December 31st, year two for a price of $242,000. So we're gonna assume an imputed interest rate of 10% on the agreement. Eris makes the following entries to record the financing on January 1st, year one. Okay, so they're going to record cash for the $200,000, right? This is the amount that they're selling the machinery for. So $200,000 of cash is coming in, and the liability to Korea is now going to be $200,000. All right, but we need to record the interest at the end of year one and at the end of year two. So interest is going to be 10% on the loan. So in year one, this is going to be interest of 10% on $200,000. So we're going to debit interest expense for $20,000 and credit the liability to Korea of $20,000, right? This is an increase in the amount that is going to be repaid. Okay, so at the end of year two, we're going to record another 10%, but now on the $220,000. Interest on year two would be $22,000, $220,000 times 10%. Credit the liability to Korea once again of 22,000. Okay, so now we can retire this liability. And we're going to do this by reversing out the liability to Korea. Okay, so the total 242,000 we no longer owe. Now we're paying the 242,000 of cash, the 200,000 from the original loan, plus the 10% on those two years. Okay, so 242,000 of cash is going out the door. The 200,000 plus the 20,000 plus the 22,000. 